Hello, the next step now to find out more about the relationship between climate change and health is to quantify things, to put numbers on all these arrows that we saw in the previous lecture. How many deaths by, by which date due to which disease will occur? Now, this is very uh, difficult. And so the first source would be to consult the IPCC. That is uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Which, um, collect, which gathers about 8,000 scientists, and among those, a small number uh, on health. And they have written a, about 40-page chapter, uh, which is on the internet, and you can download it. It's uh, Climate Change and Human Health. And there you see all these uh, references, all the publications. We must say that health is, compared to other sectors, a little bit under-researched. Uh, so we want to do more research, but it's also a very difficult area to do research. You will see why in a second. Now, before I go on, let me just summarize the five most important health impacts according to the IPCC. This is a take-home message. You see them on the left, in the left column. The injury, death and disease to intense heat waves, fires and extreme events, respiratory diseases, increased risk of undernutrition, food, water, and vector-borne infectious diseases, and reduced labor uh, and uh, health due to heat. Now, this is just uh, the five most important ones, and they are ranked according to uh, our confidence after having read through all these papers, and we classify very high, high, and so forth. So these are the five most confident uh, findings, or we are most confident about these findings. Below you see a very important part. The impacts are a function of the way climate policy is designed. If climate policy fails, then these will be much worse. If climate policy is successful, particularly at Paris at the end of the year, then we have a chance to control these impacts. The other message down there is that this is inequitably distributed geographically, which I showed you in the last lecture. Now let's go on. What is the particular problem in health? The problem is that all the diseases that are influenced by climate change are already there. There's no new disease. And here I have put three disease groups, and it's just a cartoon. It's just an illustrative um, presentation. So you see malaria, dengue, and the first group. Then you see injuries and drowning. Then you see malnutrition and so forth. And the blue bar is uh, the representation of the current burden of disease. So malaria, we have a lot of malaria. But then there will be the red part added to it. The same is true to dengue. The, the same is true to malnutrition, uh, for malnutrition, asthma, and so forth. So these red bits together is a huge burden. This is the burden, if you add them up, that is due to climate change. And this red part can be influenced by mitigation and adaptation. So it, is, it may be not a big part of the entire disease burden, but if you add them up, all these red bars are sensitive, sensible to climate policy. And this is why it's so important to find out uh, what is the size of each of these red bits and then to add them up. And then tell our uh, colleagues from policy, look, this is what will happen in terms of health impact. Now, of course, um, climate change is only one factor of many other risk factors that influence health. And we have known this for, for uh, forever. Public health has, uh, has been created on the basis that there are all these factors. But it's a new factor and this uh, uniquely, um, uniquely influenceable factor. You can impact on this by climate policy. This is why we are so keen on finding out. Now, how do we find this out? We can look at routine reported data. These are only good and reliable in rich countries which have very painstaking records, particularly the Scandinavian countries are very good at this. And you just look at the records of hospital admissions and of weather and you have uh, probably a relationship or you can look at a relationship. But in those countries where you have the largest impact around the equator, 30 latitude north and south, these r routine information systems are notoriously unreliable. 
This is why we need uh, to look at better data sets. And these data sets exist, and I will show you in a second. The idea is to have a dose-response relationship from past records and then to extrapolate this into uh, and build it into climate models so that we can even project the future. In 2100, we will have such and such a disease burden, extra disease burden due to climate change. That is the vision that we have as researchers. And of course, to do that, we need an interdisciplinary team of researchers, and we can't do this alone as health people. Here is a graph that the late Tony McMichael shared with me, and it um, exemplifies or it illustrates this in a nice way. You have in the blue bar the past, the present, and the future. And climate change is a long-term thing, so you need long-term data sets. And if you sit and wait until things happen, first of all, nobody's going to give you money for such a research project. And second, it will be a little bit late. So you can look at uh, the past, and they have 20, 30 years. If you only had good health data, you can find the meteorological data to associate it. So uh, learn from the past, detect impacts in the present, in the middle, and on the right, predictive modeling to predict, estimate the future. This is what we are trying to do in the research community. And as I said, there are data sets, and about 35, which are population-based, high quality, long-term, and you see here uh, all these sites, there are 35 of them. Uh, they are in Asia mainly and Africa. Africa is green and Asia is, um, is yellow. And you see the length. On the left hand, it's 1962. I blew it up because you can't read it. And on the right hand side of the horizontal axis, it's 2006. Um, so you see there are 50 years in some centers and in most centers more than 20 years. That's already an interval where climate change happens. I work a lot in this, uh, in this um, area where we have 150,000 people in one district and we look at their health in a continuous way. So here is um, Burkina Faso um, in Africa and West Africa and you see all the other sites uh, in yellow. The network is called in-depth as you can read on the top. We have in in-depth we have 3.2 million people under health surveillance and if you add them up across 20 years that's that 60 million person years of observation is mind-boggling. So these are the beacons of good data, health data, where we can uh, study the relationship. And just to give you a glimpse, this is the area in Nuna, and you see the villages, and then you see in the yellow uh, rectangles, you see the weather stations. Now, we have put uh, state-of-the-art weather stations, 10 of them, in the area, but you could also borrow or download um, data on meteorology every day in the past 20 years from the next meteorological station. So, and here are some results. Let's start with the right first. This is in French. It's the risk of dying for people older than 65 years, equal or older than 65 years, so um, the elderly. And you see here the temperature in the bottom. And as the temperature rises beyond 30 degrees, you see a steep rise in mortality. That is, to my knowledge, the first time that the effect of the heat, of heat on mortality has been empirically shown in low-income countries. On the left, you see uh, the uh, measured data, which are the dotted line in the middle from our center. This is temperature. And in the bottom, you see from 1900 to 2100. So from 1900 till 1960, we had colonial data, temperature data, and then from then on, national Bukinian data. And you see already the rise in temperature from just time records, temperature records. And then we, we downscaled with the help of climate scientists, of course. We downscaled the big uh, climate model to our little district and extrapolated and projected the temperature and you see it will be around 2.5 degrees hotter at the end of the century and that has ramifications on health because it's already extremely hot there. So this is uh, just a glimpse of research and I invite you to do this with us and with other colleagues. Let's produce more scientific evidence so that our case becomes ever more convincing. And if you want to contact me or others, you can uh, go through the information given on the bottom of the page. 
Thank you very much.